So I don't know if you all have read the story of Ruth before where, you know, I'm sure that most of you have, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but to be honest with you, of all of my years being a Christian, I've never read this story. Can you believe that? And so I recently read it and I could not put it down. Really, it was only four chapters, so I figured I'd finish it in one reading, but I kept on going back and reading more of it and I thought it was just very beautifully written. Um, it is a story about love. It is a story about faithfulness and loyalty. It is a story about redemption. And I just love this story. And so I just want to tell you um, a little bit about the background um, of the story and how it took place. So the story takes place during the time of uh, judges. It was a difficult time. It was a time of political instability. And many of the Israelites were scattered. And they left their home. They left their land. And they even left uh, their God uh, to be able to search for provisions and to be able to um, look for a better life. And so we are, uh, there is this couple um, that we're going to look at, and uh, their names were uh, Naomi and her husband, Elimelech, okay, and they were Jews, and they lived in Judea of Bethlehem, and they decided that they were going to move, because they were going through a famine at that time, so they decided to leave their home in Bethlehem to, and to travel to a faraway land called Moab. And so they went there and they settled there. And all of a sudden, one day, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And they had two sons, and their sons were named Malon and Chilion. And they decided to dwell there for another 10 years. Well, then the two sons also died. Very tragic. And so all who were left were the three women who were Naomi, Orpah, which is where we get the name Oprah, and then Ruth. And so Naomi was very sad and she was uh, bitter in her soul because she had lost it uh, all. And uh, she even changed her name from Naomi to Mara because Mara meant bitter. She was very bitter and sorrowful in her situation. But she heard that God was moving and he was doing miracles back in Israel and that God was providing bread from heaven for the people of Israel to eat. So she decided, well, she didn't have anything left in Moab, so she was going to leave Moab and go back home to where she belonged. But she knew that it would be a very difficult journey for her daughters because women at that time, um, if they didn't have a husband, if they, they didn't have um, a son, they had no ownership to anything. They had no entitlement to anything unless there was a family redeemer. And so these women who are a childless widow at that time, it would be very difficult for them to go into a foreign land such as Bethlehem. So Naomi says, daughters, I love you very much, but I think it is better that you just go ahead and go back home to your families here in Moab. Go back to your mothers. Go back to your families. I don't have any more sons. I don't have anything else left to offer you. So just please go back home. And so the daughters, they wept because they were very close to each other. But Orpah said, you know, well, this is a good idea. My family is just around the corner. I'm going to go back home to my family. But on the other hand, Ruth, she was very determined and she insisted and she was desperate and staying with her mother-in-law, Naomi. And she made a beautiful declaration. And I just want to read to you what she said. If you can read along with me. In the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. And it said, they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods, return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, and treat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more so 
More also, if anything but death parts you and me. And when she, when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. Or in other words, she stopped um, begging her to go back home. And so um, then Ruth then followed Naomi back to Bethlehem, but they didn't have very much and they didn't have any food. And so Ruth says, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to work. And so uh, we can have some food to eat. So she went uh, gleaning in the fields. And if you don't know what gleaning is, gleaning at that time is just going out and collecting leftover grain uh, that the farmers, farmers would leave behind so that the poor and the widow can have provisions to eat. And that's what gleaning was. And she went out gleaning in the fields. And she worked hard. She was sweating. She worked from sun up to sun down. And she just so happened to be gleaning in a field that belonged to a wealthy landowner whose name was Boaz. And Boaz was a righteous man. And so Boaz was observing in his field and all of his workers and of all the workers that were in his field, he took notice of Naomi. And he's heard of this, uh, he noticed Ruth, I'm sorry, and he's heard of Ruth before, how, um, how she was kind and faithful to her mother-in-law. And um, he took notice of her character. So he took the initiative and he went to go talk uh, to Naomi, or to Ruth, I'm sorry, went and talked to Ruth. And um, he says, please, Ruth, don't go to any other field. Stay here in my field and collect as much grain as you need for yourself. Stay here until the end of the harvest season. And he even told his male workers to watch out for her protector. Don't do anything to her. And he told his workers to leave behind extra grain for her to receive. And then he introduced Ruth to other women who are working in the field also so that she can have friendship and community. That was very thoughtful of him. And um, he says, you know, Ruth, if you're ever thirsty, you're always welcome to come and to drink from my place here. And so he showed her this generosity and these favors because he noticed her character. And so Ruth went home to Naomi and he, she shared with Naomi everything that happened and Naomi was pretty ecstatic. Naomi was like, oh wow, I've, I've heard of Boaz before. He's actually a relative of ours and he is our family redeemer. And so here's a plan. Here's what I want for you to do, right? I want you to go get yourself cleaned up. Go ahead and put on some nice clothes, get out of those farmer's clothes, put on some perfume, and go and present yourself to Boaz. Because tomorrow he's going to be working on the threshing floor, which is the place where they store grain, and he'll be working and sorting his grain there, and go and do as I say. And so the very next night, Ruth went um, to the threshing floor where Boaz was, waited until after he ate and drunk, and then she, she uncovered his feet and she laid at his feet. And so in the middle of the night, Boaz woke up and he was startled. He says, what are you doing here? And she says, my Lord, I am your servant and you are my family redeemer, please Put your cloak over me and redeem me and my family. Reboaz was very shocked at this woman's faith. And so to make the long story a little bit shorter, uh, he agreed to her request and he married her and he was capable of uh, buying back the land to redeem her and her family. And then they had a son and the son's name was Obed. And Obed actually became the great-grandfather of King David. And several years later, this was the same lineage that we have our king, Jesus Christ, come from. So that was the brief story of Ruth, a beautiful story. But I want to focus a little bit more on the character of Ruth. See, Ruth was a Moabite and she had become a childless widow, and now she is a foreigner. She's living with her mother-in-law in Bethlehem, and her name actually means friendship, and she was loyal in her relationship to Naomi. And even Bo Boaz took notice of her, and he says everyone in town even knew that she was a virtuous woman. But more than anything, 
She had an excellent kind of faith, the kind of faith that we all can relate to and the faith that we could be encouraged by. So an excellent faith. And so I would like to just talk about some qualities of an excellent faith that we can pull from this story. So an excellent faith is recognizing your need for God and turning to him. And so in the beginning of the story, um, as if you can remember, Naomi um, and her husband Elimelech decided to leave where they were living, which was in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem means the house of bread. It was the place of God's providence. And it was a difficult time, a time of famine. And so they decided to, to leave where they are, to leave the house of bread, to go to Moab. And Moab was a mountainous area. It was on the other side of the Jordan on the way to Canaan. Um, and they decided to go back there and to start a life there. And Moab was a place that was at, often in conflict with Israel, and they worshipped idols. Have you ever been through a difficult time where you just decided to leave God because times were difficult? Because oftentimes it's easier for us to leave when things get hard or when things begin, begin to get difficult. You thought that maybe you could do it on your own or maybe you think that you can try to figure things out or work things your own way, but it doesn't get any easier when sometimes we're, we're outside of the will of God. And so at that time, Naomi decided to, um, when she had lost everything, then she decided that she would go back home to Bethlehem because she heard that God was moving there. She heard that God was providing bread from heaven there. And so let's look a little bit at what uh, the process of which Ruth uh, came and decided to follow God. In verse 14, it said that Ruth clung to Naomi. Um, to um, clung or to cling is actually to join closely together. It is to unite. Um, oftentimes when um, an infant clings to uh, his parent or to his mother, it is because he's trying to adapt to the world and he sees that maybe that he and his mother are one unit, are one. And, and um, this parent provides a source of security, a source of life in order for the baby to survive in the world. And here we see that Ruth clung to Naomi. And, you know, usually adults, we don't cling to each other in that kind of way. But here, you know, Ruth felt like Naomi was a source of security, that she had something that she needed. In verse 16, it says, Ruth says, entreat uh, me not to leave you or turn back from following after you for wherever you go, I will go. So she wanted to leave everything behind, and she wanted to follow Naomi, and Naomi didn't have anything left to offer her because Naomi had lost her husband, she had lost her sons, she had no property, she had nothing left in the physical, but there was something else that she wanted. And I believe that, you know, during the 10 years that Ruth was living with her mother-in-law, I believe that during that time that maybe she was observing, maybe she was witnessing Naomi, maybe it was during times of difficulty when they were trying to make ends meet, um, and that maybe she saw Naomi worship her God, maybe she saw her pray, or maybe um, Naomi had shared stories around the table about this amazing God that stirred up her hunger to want to know God more and to also turn to him. And so Ruth began to notice, to recognize that Naomi worshiped a one and true living God, something that she didn't have that she wanted to follow. Because in the physical, there is nothing there. In the physical, it seemed like there was nothing left, but there is something beyond the physical that Ruth wanted to follow Naomi for. When people look into your life, what do they see? Do they see that you worship the one and true living God? Do they see fruit in your life? Do they see something attractive that they want to taste and see? Is there something good in your life? When people look in, in your life, does it make them want to follow the God that you worship? 
It reminds me of a story about my sister-in-law, and some of you may know her. Um, I love her to pieces, and um, she gave me permission to share a little bit, but when she met my brother-in-law, or Peter's brother, she was actually working in Malaysia um, as a hotel uh, receptionist, and my brother was traveling to Malaysia and met her there and was attracted to her instantly because she was very cute and attractive, and... Um, um, eventually, they started getting to know each other. He, uh, they started to fall in love, and he asked her to marry her love story. Um, but she, um, in the process of their courtship, she started to, um, to fall in love with the God that my brother served. And she eventually gave her life uh, to Jesus Christ, um, a genuine decision that she made. But then she realized that there was a decision that she had to make, that she would then have to leave her home, her family, her land to go to America. And it was very difficult for her because it was all that she knew at that time. But she knew that God had a plan for her and she knew that God had a purpose for her and she had to trust that. She had to make the decision even when it was uncomfortable, but she knew that where she was was not where she wanted to be. And God had a greater blessing I had a greater inheritance for her that she had to be able to leave behind so that her life can be transformed to be made new. So an excellent kind of faith is also trusting God despite our circumstances. Trusting him, having faith, no matter what your circumstances look like. In verse 15, it says, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law, but Ruth said, I want to follow you and I want to follow your God. Why did Orpah decide to leave, but Ruth was determined to follow Naomi? One left and one stayed. You know, when we trust in God, things will happen, life will happen, circumstances will turn out not the way we expect, and we, um, you know, we will face losses, and people will come and go, you know, but we have to understand that when we're in God, people will come and go in our lives for a reason and a purpose, and there might be a season or a time when somebody is in our life, but when they are insistent, and leaving my brothers and sisters I want to encourage you that there's a time that you just have to let them go because maybe they are no longer to, connected to where God is calling you to go but then sometimes God will connect you to different people and God will bring different people into your lives where um, you know that the, because the hand of God is upon their lives, you want to be where they are going. You want to you be able to experience God for themselves because you know that God is there. And so Ruth decided to follow Naomi because she knew that the hand of God was on Naomi's life. Ruth trusted God despite her circumstances. And in verse 15, it says, where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people. It would have been easier for her to go back home to her comfort. And even the travel from Moab to Bethlehem would, been, would have been treacherous. It wasn't an easy journey as we may think it is. It's about 50 miles um, according to the books. You know, and that would be easy in, in the city of Houston. We drive everywhere, but in it's 50 miles. But back then they traveled by foot and um, it was pretty rough terrain. They would cross over mountainous areas and over the Jordan. And um, it was definitely no fun, but Ruth was willing to risk all of that to go into a place where she didn't know what her future would look like. She didn't know what the environment will be or where she would stay, but she still decided to go. We walk by faith and not by sight. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our paths. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do you trust in the Lord when times get difficult, when all else seems to fail? Do you cling on to the hope of the promises that God has for your life? You know, for me to prepare this message this week was actually pretty hard, um, 
I felt like I was just going through a lot. There was so much going on in my mind. I had the weight of feeling like I had to accomplish it all. And uh, when pastor asked me to share this message, uh, my spirit was willing, but my flesh was weak, and I, my mind was not in it. And uh, we had a family funeral Friday and Saturday, people coming in from out of town. It was just left and right. I mean, I give our pastor respect. I don't know how he does it all, you know, week after week and children and family and everything that he does, but it was definitely very hard. But what I was reminded of is that if God trusted me to be here, if God has called me to be here, if he trusts me, then I can surely trust the almighty God because I know that he is with me and he will guide me and lead me. Trusting God despite our circumstances is like following God like he's our GPS, right? So I had this real story when I was in college and I had to travel over the weekend to a conference in Austin um, and I was traveling with one of my classmates and um, we somehow ended up in College Station. We were supposed to be in Austin. We went to College Station, but it got dark and the roads were scary and there was thick Fog. I mean, it was so thick that you cannot see uh, what was five feet ahead of you. And so my classmate decided to take another detour and to go to the, an electronic store to buy a GPS, one of those Garmin GPSs that, you, you know, big old one that you, you stick to your, your uh, windshield. And I'm thinking, this girl is crazy. Okay, I know we're lost, and I know you got some money, but, you know, we're getting a GPS, I'm like, okay, but God taught me something with that simple moment because we depended and relied on that GPS like it was the voice of God. I mean, like we could not see what was ahead of us. All we could see was like this mist, um, but we just like, we listened to the voice and when it gave that next step, we took that next turn and, we, and it gave that next step, we made that next direction. And even though we couldn't, we couldn't see where we were going. We weren't quite sure we were going to get there, but we followed it step by step until we got the, to the destination that we wanted to go. Trusting God despite our circumstances. Excellent faith is taking action to what God has called you to do. Faith takes action. Faith doesn't happen until you make the decision to do something about it. Faith is the currency that actually moves God to do something to, uh, to move in your situation. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that is not seen. You cannot see faith, but faith works whenever you, you do something, you start performing out of faith because faith has to move. And when it's not moving, your faith is dead. James 2.17, it says, Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it is dead. So things don't just happen. God moves when you decide that when you say you have faith, that you also move whenever he says to move. In Ruth chapter 2, verse 2, it says, So Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean fields of grain after him, in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. In verse 3, And she happened, um, nothing just happens in God, to come to the field belonging to Boaz, who was the family of Elimelech. See, she, she believed that, that it was out there. She believed that her blessing was for her, but she didn't just sit at home waiting for food to show up on her table. She went out and she worked. She was a hard worker. She worked day and night, you know, um, and she didn't just wait for her husband to come knocking on a door for Prince Charming to come and save her. She trusted God. I believe that she prayed, and I believe that she was in tune to God and allowed God to guide her where she needed to be. She had faith. She believed, but she went out and took a hold of her blessing also. God will sometimes put you in situations where you have the opportunity to step out in faith and receive your blessings. 
I also want to encourage you, if God has given you a vision for something greater in your life, if God has given you a dream, don't lose sight of it. Don't take your eyes off of it. Don't give up, no matter what the circumstances are. A lot of times when we look at the bigger picture, when we try to figure out all the details, especially myself, it can be overwhelming. But just keep your eyes on the goal and envision that vision that he has given you. Step out in faith and go and, and achieve whatever God has called you to do. During a time when I was taking care of my father, during a time of about 10 years, I was in college, I was going through college, I was going through grad school, and I remember like during that time, I did not know what the next day was gonna bring. I didn't know what my next week was going to look like. Every day seemed like it was mundane. It was very routine. I would go to school, come home, and take care of my father. I didn't know what my future was going to look like. All I hoped for that my parents would one day knew the God that I served. Yeah. And so this was the time just three weeks before, three, three months before he passed away. And he, there was an urgent situation. I had to take him to the ER and I was sitting on the passenger side of that ambulance and I felt the Holy Spirit just come upon me. He said, now, now is the time, now is the moment. Pray for him, give him the invitation to receive Jesus. And so right there in the emergency room, as soon as the nurse walked out, I said, dad, I have something to ask you. And he accepted Christ right there, gave me the opportunity to pray. Even on his deathbed, God is faithful. And the reason why I tell you this is because I know that many of you, you pray for your loved ones, you pray for your family, and I know that declaring God's promises is one thing and believing that God is capable and able, able to save your family. But what are you doing about it? What are you doing on your part to make sure that God's promises, God's blessings for your life is fulfilled. Are you doing your part? An excellent kind of faith takes courage, the courage to take risks, the courage to do crazy and wild things because life in God is an adventure, the courage to obey because obedience is the greatest act of worship. Jesus Christ, he had the courage even to the point of being crucified that he obeyed even when his flesh wasn't willing. He said, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. And he had the courage to obey even to the cross so that he can save the world. In the verse of 17, um, Ruth says, and you're God, my God, and where you die, I will die. Ruth was willing to give her life, even to die, to follow her inheritance, to follow Naomi, and to follow this God. She was willing to risk it all. Ruth was courageous in that. But not only that, she was also pretty courageous when um, she said, when she agreed to uh, obey Naomi's crazy idea to go and propose to her Boaz. I mean, that was a pretty wild idea. But she knew that God was with her, and she was doing it out of faith, and she was doing it out of obedience. You know, I believe that courage is not necessarily the absence of fear, but it's, it's facing fear and saying, God, you are bigger than my fear, that even when you're afraid, you're going to do it anyways because you know that God is with you, and if God is with you, no one can be against you, and I'm still going to do it because, God, you called me, and if you are for me, no one can be against me. I can do all things through you who gives me strength. If God has called you to do something, he is faithful, he will equip you and go with you through it. In Deuteronomy 31.6, it says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you, who will not leave you or forsake you. I imagine when... Um, David, shepherd boy David, faced Goliath, this nine-foot giant of an enemy. You know, I'm pretty sure he must have been afraid, you know, to be able to face this giant. And all he had in his hand was a slingshot. But he, but he knew that God was with him. He knew that God was with him, and he was able to face this giant. He was able to face his fear and do what God had asked him to do. 
Excellent faith is also knowing God's word and declaring his promises. It says in Romans 10, 17, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. It doesn't say faith comes by reading only, but it says faith comes by hearing. So when you're reading the word and you are speaking it out loud in your prayers and you are declaring his promises and his blessings in your life, faith comes by hearing. And the more you hear the word, the more your faith foundation will be strong and will be solidified and you're able to build your house that God has called you to build. And whenever the storms come against you and hit against you, your house, it will not fall down because your foundation, your faith foundation is strong. Amen. Ruth was a Moabite, a foreigner, but she knew, somehow she knew the Jewish law. She knew that you know, she knew about gleaning. She knew that she can go out and glean the fields and that it would be some grain left behind for her to receive um, because it's provided for, for the poor and for the widow. She knew that. How could she have known that if she was a foreigner and this was an Israelite law? Somebody must have told her. She must have heard it somewhere. Maybe Naomi taught her, but she knew. And so she went out and took advantage of that to receive that for herself. She also understood about a kinsman redeemer and how she can be redeemed and her inheritance could be restored. She understood about that. And so she went out to go and claim her inheritance. Your blessings don't just come. You have to step out in faith. You have to yeah. reach out. You have to receive it to be able to get your blessing. That's right. Knowing God's word and declaring his promises. And so as I... Um, just bring this to a close. I just want to ask you to think about the things that we talk about today. Um, how is your faith walk? What is the status of where you are right now in your faith? Do you pursue an excellent kind of faith, the kind of faith that you would trust God no matter what the circumstances, that you would um, leave everything behind and turn to him? Where are you in your faith walk? Are you believing and declaring the promises of God? Are you spending time in his word day and night as your bread of life, as your daily bread? Because Naomi, she decided you know, she heard that God was feeding the people bread from heaven. Are you spending time in the daily bread to receive that for yourself so that your faith can grow? Are you, are you needing more courage to be able to do what God wants for you to do, to do what God has called you to do? F the courage to obey, the courage to step out, to, the courage to be able to take risks and to, to do great things because God wants to do greater things in your life. It was by Ruth's excellent faith that led her to her inheritance. But not only that, it was by her excellent faith that she was able to leave behind a legacy. And through her lineage, the king of the world, Jesus Christ, was able to be born. Amen. Do you have that kind of excellent faith that when people look in your life or when they eat the fruit of the faith that was in your life, because your faith will encourage those around you, the fruit of faith and your daily walk with Jesus will encourage the people around you. Do you have that? Because even when Ruth had this faith, when Naomi, she was crushed, she called herself Mary. I'm just so bitter, but because Ruth's faith was getting excited, Ruth's faith was growing, and she wanted to follow God, that encouraged Naomi. Do you have that kind of excellent faith that people are attracted to your God? Have you left your home? Have you left um, being in uh, the house of bread? Have you, have you turned and you've gone another way? Because times have gotten stressful. Times have gotten hard. Maybe something has gotten difficult. Something didn't turn out the way you wanted. Did you turn the other way and you just needed to go back home to the house of bread? <clears throat> Or is there an area of your life that just seems hard? It just, it just feels like a grind. Or maybe there's a part uh, in your life that maybe it's just fizzy, fizzing out. Uh, maybe it's dying out. Maybe it's your hope. Maybe it's your peace. Maybe it's your joy. Whatever it is, I just want to encourage you 
I just want to encourage you to, to take it back, to bring it, to go back to the house of bread and lay it down. Whatever it is that you need to lay it down, lay it down. Lay it down at the feet of the Redeemer and let him restore you. And so I would just like to close out this message and allow you uh, to just reflect, just to take a moment, just to meditate on these things. God, I want a more excellent faith. God, I want more of you. I want a more excellent faith. I want to I wanna turn back to you, Lord. I want to be all that you have called me to be, to have the kind of excellent faith that you desire for me to have. And so I just want to pray for all of you, and you're welcome as the musicians come here, and they, they play a little bit of, of song, and I just, you can close your eyes, but I just want to let you know and remind you that the, the altar is open. The, this is the threshing floor. This is where the feet of our Redeemer is, and if you need to lay it down at the cross, whatever it is, if you need to lay it down at the feet of your Redeemer, and just let the Lord fill you back up again, because he is the bread of life. He is the bread of life that always satisfies and he wants to restore you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your living word, for your word is life and life everlasting. God, we, we take this word today and by faith we receive it, Father God, as our bread, as our food. Father God, teach us to follow your way. Teach us, Lord, help us by your grace. Lord, not by my might, not by my strength, but by your power, says the Lord. And so God, help us. It is by your grace that you help us, Lord. We want to grow deeper into you. We want to have a more excellent faith in you Jesus we declare that you are our redeemer God that in you nothing is impossible Lord that whatever we are struggling with that whatever we are striving for Lord you are capable there is nothing that is impossible for you Lord there's nothing that you cannot change or turn around God we trust you God we trust you God we trust you with all of our hearts God and we lean not on our own understanding and all your ways you will make our path straight and so Jesus Christ our Redeemer we trade you our sorrows we trade you our pain we give you what we have or all that we have this is all that we have God this is all that we have God this is my life and I lay it down Jesus at your feet come and fill us Lord we thank you Jesus it is in your name 